friends, welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla, and I'm so excited that you came back to visit with me again today. I appreciate that so much. I love visiting with you guys, and I am really just enjoying this time together this month. So, keep in mind that I am, you know, answering questions that are left in the comments this month. And so, if you have a question that you would like to ask me, ask in the comments below this video and I will try to answer them in tomorrow's video so that's what we're doing <laughs> so here is the blanket that I'm working on I'm calling it my sweetheart granny rectangle blanket now I may say that name different every day I don't know <laughs> but that's the plan it's something like that it's a Valentine blanket, and it's a rectangle, and it's a granny stitch, so call it whatever. But I'm loving it. I love the way the colors are. I love that I'm working on it while I'm chatting with you guys, and it's growing every day. Can you see how big it is? I mean, this is one end, so it's almost too big to spread out here. This will probably be the last time that I can spread it out as much as this. I'll probably just be showing it in sections before long without taking a picture but anyway so this is day five of these videos and so um there are these videos started on february the first and if you have missed some of those or you want to go back and catch up and find out the details and all that about this blanket those videos are there on my channel <laughs> So I don't want to just repeat every day, you know, because these videos get kind of long answering questions. And so I don't want to repeat every day all the details when it's already out there. And, um, you know, you can easily go and find it and watch and catch up on that. So, but anyway, I know um, a lot of you guys have said that you are making a blanket. Um, you may not be using these colors, you know, you might be doing your own thing or whatever. But please do post a photo of them in the uh, Llama Mama, Kayla, and Big Daddy Facebook group. And so we can see those. And um, some people have said that they're using very similar colors to what I'm using. And some people have said that... Um, they might be using scrap yarns. I mean, I'm using scrap yarns. I did not buy any yarn for this. And then some people might have bought yarn. And then some people have said that they didn't have, you know, these colors. Or they found other colors. Like somebody said they were making <clears throat> one using um, strawberry shortcake colors. And I bet that is just gorgeous. I can't wait to see that. But anyway, so if you want to jump in and start working on a blanket, do your own thing. It don't have to look like this at all um now i did start with the three granny squares and single crocheted them together on the back side and then i just started granny stitching around so there you go <laughs> there it is in the um oh i forgot what's those little for colleges you can get those little bitty books that pretty much tell about everything you would learn I almost said it again. I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, I have been just going around in, on these squares. I went around, you know, with my colors. I went up to the white, and then I put them together. And then I went around with this um, variegated, and then the gray. And then I just started repeating these again. So, I repeated this whole thing right here again coming out. So, now I'm going to get a little more random with it. And I'll tell you one reason why is because these skeins of yarn are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. That means they're not going to go all the way around because they're getting smaller. The blanket's getting bigger. <laughs> so, it needs to get more random. So, um, today what I'm doing is I decided to just make a ball of each of the colors that I'm using. They're not all the same size. Some of them is wound a little tighter than others. They look they look similar in size, but some of them are thicker and some of them are denser, you know, I mean it just 
depends. I didn't wind them all the same. So they're not going to go like exactly around. And especially since the blanket's getting bigger, the, you know, mounting arm won't go as far. And that just, you know, it's common sense. But anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with that color that goes next, but it's not going to go like probably all the way around or it might go like that pink. I don't know. It could go all the way around and then overlap a little bit. And that that's fine. That's the randomness of it. And then the next color would just start and just, just keep going like that. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I just made up those little balls just to do for today. And then, um, I'll just make up some more different ball sizes and stuff to use up this yarn. Now, somebody asked me how much yarn it was going to take to make this. I have no idea. Just when I get finished, I get finished, you know. And if I run out of some of these yarns that I'm using, which I am. I'm going to run out of this, I know. I'm just going to pick something similar that's in my stash. I might go looking in my... Um, scrap balls and in my floppy cabinet to um, check out some of those baskets of yarn that's just got like in my floppies is what i call not a full skein of yarn not a scrap ball but a floppy piece that's <laughs> too much to wind up but not enough to call a full skein so i have that cabinet behind me and so i'll probably um get you know go through there and look but yeah, and I may not have this exact same color such as this, but um, I'll just find something similar. It don't have to be exactly the same. Yeah, so anyway, that's what I'm doing. It's just, um, I'm going to just get going. And while we chat and talk, oh, but one thing, I'm going to pause right here and delete something off my phone so it doesn't stop recording while I'm talking later so one second okay friends I am back um I just had to delete a couple of long videos off my phone so that it wouldn't stop recording while I was working here um last night I did crochet a couple of little outfits for patina one of my little my poodle doll um I made her this little jumpsuit it there's an armhole let me see i made her this little jumpsuit it's a one piece um outfit here there's an armhole here and an armhole here and so it just pulls up on her it's really cute on her i've already taken a photo of her wearing it but i'll probably be doing some more photos of her wearing it also and then, uh, since it's Mardi Gras season here, I crocheted her this little Mardi Gras dress. I put Velcro on the back. And then I just glued on some beads there. And the start of this is a granny square. And then I just went crazy after that. <laughs> So, it's cute on her, too. So, I'm going to be taking some Mardi Gras photos of her. And in a patina group that I'm in, we um, are doing some Valentine. It's like a Valentine hunt with patina and doing certain photos that, um, like, we have a list of photos to try to get with her. And so, um, just, just all those pictures are due by stuff think today it closes on the six the contest does but I'm not really doing it for the contest um, I'm just doing it for the you know fun of it and the distraction and all that and something to, you know for melts for my mind to focus on but anyway so I'm taking some Valentine photos of her and I have share I'm sharing those on Instagram also and on Instagram, I am llama.mama.kayla. I can just look at Kayla Miller, and that should come up. And Patina is a photo, my, um, oh, what do you call the little, the little photo on there? 
<laughs> I hate it when I lose my words. Like, I'll know exactly what I'm saying until I start to say it. And then I just start losing my words. Um, but anyway, so I, I did a little cro extra crocheting last night while I was letting this video upload. And I enjoyed that. So I'm going to be making her some more little outfits. I would like to sew her some outfits, but... Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not good at sewing, you know, like I've sewed things, but more like costume things for my kids or just things that, I don't know. <laughs> so when B, me and Big Daddy was in Walmart the other morning, I did pick up a couple of fat quarters and he said, what are you going to do with those? I said, oh, we're going to make patina some dresses. He said, we... Who is we? I said, we. <laughs> and so he was like, what about this one? What about this one? And so I ended up getting four fat quarters of, you know, different materials. And then he said, but I still don't know who this we is. <laughs> that we is you, buddy. I'll be the brains and you can be the hands. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to jump in and start answering some questions that you guys have asked. Um, in yesterday's video, again, another great round of questions. And um, I enjoy reading through them as I was jotting them down on, um, in a notebook here. So, and I had missed this one in the, I had wrote it down, but for some reason missed when I was reading my list, but someone asked, do I ever get lonely since I'm here by myself a lot? Big Daddy works late hours, you know, a lot and stuff. And yes, I do. I do get lonely. <laughs> but I usually go take a nap or something like that. Um, and I, I do wish that I had a crochet friend that lived close by. Um... I wish that I had a dog collector friend that lived close by. Um, I wish there was a doll group club or whatever you call it, meetups and stuff close by. Um, I know in New Orleans there's a doll club, but I think from what I read it was like a lot of rules, and I'm not a rule person. I can never follow rules. I, even if I make the rules, I still can't follow them, okay? Um, and I think it's where you, like, pay a monthly fee, whether you attend anything or not or whatever. I don't know. It didn't, it's not what I was looking for. I'm just looking for some people to hang out with, you know, go, go meet up at IHOP and hang out and drink tea and coffee and talk and, you know, take a good doll or two and share and talk about it and maybe get together and craft and, you know, do some things like that. So, I don't know. I've been praying about that because, remember, I used to have a very, very active life um, and all kinds of friends, but... Um, but a lot of those were like homeschool friends and we've, you know, our kids have grown up and we've just went opposite ways. You know, I still, if I was to run into them, you know, great. We could just pick up and have a great conversation, but we're just not into the same things anymore or whatever. And then there's also those friends where, um, you know, your health is bad and so... Um, they quit asking you to do things or whatever, you know, but, um, yeah, I wish there was a friend that lived close by that liked to crochet and it, a bonus would be, that, you know, they were a doll collector. <laughs> that would just be a bonus. But anyway, I would take either one. And I did go to the library and, you know, try to join up on that. Um, crochet club and I did enjoy that very much but I only got to go that one time because then um, let's see what I, what happened after that I had surgery and then Big Daddy's truck is broke down so he is taking the car now and so I'm 
once again at home with no way to go. So, and yes, I could t get up and take him to work in the mornings, um, but it's an hour away, an hour home, do whatever I'm going to do that day, an hour there to go get him, and an hour back home. So, that's a hard day on me to do all that. Now, if I just had the car and I ran up town and done whatever I was going to do and came back home, I could handle that. It's the hour drive there and the hour drive back. That's just a bit much to me. Yeah, so... Anyway. Um, so, someone asked about Dakota being a vegetarian. Dakota's our oldest son. He will be 32 this month. And they wanted to know at what age did he decide he was a vegetarian. Well, you know, that kid never ate meat when he was a baby. Like, he just rejected m meats. When he was a toddler, you know how, like, you can give a toddler chicken nuggets? No, he wasn't going to eat a chicken nugget. Um, if anything, he might have ate the crust off around it a couple of times. Um, like, you know how toddlers, you can give, like, a hot dog weenie? You know, they'll eat on that, walk around, eat on that or whatever. No. Dakota, he he never liked chicken, um, even hamburgers. He always just got meat and cheese. I mean, bread and cheese. He never got meat in a hamburger. He, he did not even have his first hamburger until he was like 16 years old. And it was a vegetarian burger. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> he just never, even as a baby, he just never took to meat. Okay, so he's just always been a vegetarian. And then as he got older, you know, he's against eating animals. <laughs> and Big Daddy loves him some animal. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I have eating issues. But anyway, and then Elijah has eating issues. So we're just all messed up bunch around here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he just never, never took to meat. I know one time, um, my friend Angela has two, a niece and a nephew that's the same age as Dakota. And so she and I went to the mall. She took her niece and nephew, and I had Dakota. And those kids got a Happy Meal, and Dakota got a Happy Meal, but Dakota got just bread and cheese. And they got a hamburger. Like, I don't know if they had a Happy Meal. I think they had, like, a adult meal. And them kids sat down there and was just eating that hamburger, and I was just like, what? Kids do that? Because <laughs> that was not Dakota at all. But, um, yeah, he's made it. Okay, so somebody asked about my little friend Zeke because I hadn't mentioned him coming down much. They um, thought Zeke, maybe Zeke had moved. No, they're, they're still um, around. What happened is um, the last few months, I haven't been putting out as many YouTube videos. You know, that kind of slack down. Um... Like, I hadn't been, I just hadn't been putting out the amount of content that I was putting out before. And so, when you don't put out your content, you, your pay goes down. <laughs> so, my YouTube income has greatly suffered from that. But I, I'm working to get that back up now. So, yeah, I'll be okay. But what I'm saying is, so I haven't had money to pay him to come and do stuff. And so, that's why he hadn't come down as much, you know. His mom's asked, you know, do you need Zeke? And I'll tell you, you know, no, not right now. Um, and then I did tell her the other day that just my YouTube income has just went down so much. But it's going to pick back up. It's it's picking back up already this month. So, yeah. So, I'll have him back down to do stuff for me. And I've had him to come to a few things that, you know, I could just afford to pay him to do. 
but um, I just couldn't pay him to come as often and as much and do as much and stuff as he had been doing before. So he's a great kid, and um, he did come down Friday. Yeah, his mom went out of town, and he came. He chose to come down here, and we had made the arrangements, you know, the day before. And he done some things for me, and then um, I appreciated that very much. It was some things that I just hadn't been able to do that I can get him to, you know, do do things. So, anyway, he'll be back more often after I start getting my income up some. Okay, somebody said, oh, somebody asked, is Sissy your pain support cat? No, Sassy. They asked, was Sassy my pain support cat? Honestly, I think I'm her emotional person, <laughs> support person. <laughs> That cat is just, like, so attached to me. She is, I think, the most attached to me. And then Phoebe. And then Sissy. But Sassy is just... I mean, just crazy. Has to be right with me. Right now, Sissy and Sassy are asleep on the piano in our, their bed. And Phoebe is asleep in her puppy bed on the bench that's around behind me. And so maybe they'll all stay over there for a little bit. <laughs> and then somebody, a couple people did mention, you know, that my cats and my dogs, when I'm upset, know that and come to me. And yes, they do. Yes, they do. And um, Phoebe and Sassy... And even Sissy sometimes, too. When I'm upset, they want to comfort me, but they want me to hold them. And I can't just hold them all. <laughs> and I can't just hold them all all day long. I can't do anything else. And so it kind of gets funny. Um, I'm the one upset, not feeling good or whatever, and I'm having to console them. <laughs> so that get, that does get funny. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I didn't skip. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Somebody asked um, where, where was me and Big Daddy born? And what, were we born and raised in Louisiana? Yes, we were. We were both born and raised right here. Um, we have a, what we call Twin Cities, Monroe and West Monroe. And the Washita River divides them. So it's pretty much the same town, but there's a river, and we have the west and side to in the Monroe side. But anyway, I was born and raised in the West Monroe side, and you know I don't know if Big Daddy was born or in Monroe or West Monroe, but um, he did live in West Monroe, very close to me when we were kids, but we didn't know each other then. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see, somebody, somebody asked about if we were planning on doing any more market booths. There's one that I want to do in June that I've already signed up for that we would do in June. We signed up for it last June. So I would like to do some small size amigurumis maybe some um crossover body bags and um oops i forgot to do a double crochet on that maybe some smaller things like that and so that may be what i work on some this month like um next month i might do a week or two of just doing baby lovies and seeing what i can knock out and then a week or two of just doing um, granny squares for crossover bags. The cross cross body bags, is that what they're called? Yeah, I might do something like that. Um, now June is a hot month, so I'm thinking smallish amigurumis. 
and just things like that. I already have a lot of stuff, but just to, you know, add in a few things, I'm thinking baby loveys and um, purses, bags, things like that. Maybe some market bags. Um, I know that there's some great crochet patterns out there for market bags and so i might look at one of those later but yeah i was just thinking it might be something i do um one month just focus on small amigurumis one month do baby loveys things like that anyway you can see this pink is almost run out so it didn't go I started in this corner here and it went down this side and here so I'm just gonna start the next yarn and that one is uh, this right here and so what I'm gonna do is now you can join your yarn ever how you want to uh, I know a lot of people like to do like an invisible join type thing and that is perfect for you and you know what I don't know where my scissors are But I'm just going to join mine like this, and then I'll, I'm going to tie it a couple of times, and then clip it not too close, but not a real long tails left either. And I don't know, I think, I remember using my scissors earlier, but um, I think I left them. Nope, here they are. I was going to say, I left him back there with Big Daddy. He was tying something up to patina for me because <laughs> I was taking some photos of her. And then he said, I need a longer piece of yarn. So I come got the skein and these. But then I think he ended up, was able to use the piece I originally took, took him. So anyway, so I do plan on doing that market. There's another market coming up, I think, in... Um, May, somebody sent me some information on that. Um, well, it's a, it's, it's going to be out here close to where I live, and so it's a community type thing. Maybe, I don't know. I didn't read it too well. I just looked to see how much the booths were, and it was very affordable. It was only like $30 for an inside booth. Um... And then 40 if you want electricity. But if it's inside, we don't need fans or anything. Uh, we'd probably just be able to do the $30 booth. And so, I hadn't talked to Big Daddy about that. But, um, yeah, that's something we might do also. I'll just have to see what he wants to do. It depends on how we're feeling. I really hate to sign up for market booths and things like that. And then um, not be able to do it. And it is a lot of work. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of work. But we do have our totes already packed, priced. They just have to get to the vehicle. And that's something we might be able to get Zeke to do um, for us. And I know he wants to go to markets with us and do that because he's asked about it several times. Um so that might be something so you see how that just blends on in with the next color and it's going to be random like that but it's going to go in the same color sequence but just more random so and i'm good with that i'm good with that totally because like i said that skein of yarn is eventually not going to go all the way around and then what are you going to do it's going to get random so i'm just going to start the randomness on my own now okay so um somebody asked did i have an amigurumi project that i look forward to doing i love doing amigurumis they are so fun i like doing animals and just watching their little personality come together as i'm making it you know i always think like that <laughs> But I do love, I'll, I just love doing lamigurumis, but I don't really have one in particular that I'm like planning to do um, at the moment. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I have some rabbits for Easter. Yes. 
I'm going to I'm going to be working on those some too. What is this? This is February, March. I don't even know when Easter is. And I can't ask Alexa right now because she um she's on vacation. She wants a password that I don't have. Whatever password she wants is not my password. It's Dakota's password. And he has sent me, I think on my um, Google Drive, he has put on there a list of passwords for me. But um, I would have to go and, you know, look that up, find that file, open it, read it. It'd be so much easier just to call him tomorrow and ask him what that password is. <laughs> So that's what I'll do. I just hate doing tedious things where you got to open this, re do this, do that, you know. It's just so much easier just to ask him. So that's what I'll do tomorrow. Um, and then what was I saying before that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I have some rabbit, a little rabbit set that I want to do for Easter. And so I need to work on that. I have worked on it. I need to work on it some more and then then make a video and show you guys how cute they are. Okay, so another thing is a crochet whip most intimidating to me. Oh, well, the longer it sits there, the more it gets intimidating because you forget what size hook you was using, what yarn you were using. Um, I don't know. It, it does. The longer it sits there, the more intimidating it gets. And the louder it screams my name, the more intimidating it gets. <laughs> so, I probably have a lot of those projects. Um, I guess, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I can't really name a particular one, to be honest. Somebody asked, would I like to try needle knitting? Not at this time. I'm just kind of content right now. Um, I, I don't really feel like I have the brain capacity to learn anything new. I'm just, I'm just riding the waves, okay? I'm content right now. And I don't feel like I have room in my brain to add anything else. And I know other people feel that way. Somebody else even said that. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, okay, somebody asked this question. Somebody asked how... I'm just going to take this piece of yarn here. I don't have to... Um, they're asking about, okay, so when you make a chain, say you're making a project, and it wants you to chain a bunch. <laughs> I'm not going to count them. I'm just going to chain a bunch of times and see. So they want you to chain this long chain. I don't know what you're making. You might be making... Um, a pair of pants or a purse or I don't know I'm trying to do that too fast so they want you to make this chain and let's pretend I'm gonna stop here but let's pretend like this is a super long chain like you know this long okay so they want you to go start here they want you to join in that first loop the first chain to make this a ring but you've got this long chain that's all twisted up and you're trying to untwist it and keep it flat and you know not let it twist all up so you can join it back into um i guess you would you know join it into your first loop there okay so she's asking how do you keep that from twisting up I don't this is what I do right here uh oh 
whatever the pattern calls for. If it's calling for single crochets, I just um, single crochet back down that whole chain. And when I am going to do this, I make sure, like if I know that project, I make sure I leave this tail right here long. Um, but I'll just come back down. I know there's some baby pants I make that I especially do this on. I just come back down all the way to the end. And by the time you get all the way down that chain and you get all your stitches in there, whether it's single crochets, double crochets, or halves, or whatever, that is not twisted up anymore. Uh -oh. That's not twisted up anymore. And you can lay it out straight, and then guess what you can do? You can just join it right there. Uh, I just keep popping in and out of that, don't I? And then you can just join it, and you don't have to fight that twistingness and trying to lay that flat and get that all done. Why would you fight that and worry with that when you don't have to? So, say, so, okay, I'm back down to my first one there. Okay, and then what I would do is take my chain, that long, long chain that I've now crocheted, and I'm just going to join in. But you do have to make sure you have your yarn in the right place. <laughs> and I would just. Just slip stitch into that. If that's what it calls for. You know whatever your pattern calls for. And then just start crocheting in the round. And then afterwards. After I get going. You know good ways or whatever. I take this long tail that I made. And I come back and I just stitch those two together right here. And you cannot tell at all that you did that. So, yeah, that's what I do. I don't fight those long, twisty pieces. Okay, and somebody else asked this. They've been, they've been trying to do a magic ring when they're doing a, a groomies and they're having trouble doing the magic ring. And so they were asking, how did I do it? I don't, I don't make a magic ring. Um, I've never made the magic ring for a project. Confession. <laughs> what I do, um, and this is the way I start all my amigurumis or anything that I'm making that needs to be done this way. I chain two. One, two. Okay, and then that first chain, if I'm supposed to be putting six single crochets into a magic ring, I just put my six single crochets into that first chain. Uh, this is a, uh, the reason why I'm having so much trouble is this is a small hook that I was using to make patina clothes with. And it's a hook size I'm not used to using. But I just put all six of my single crochets in that very first chain. Now, if I were doing ten, and I thought I might lose that very first one, I would put a stitch marker in it as I get going. So that after I get all ten or twelve or whatever, You'd be able to say, oh, well, let me pull that. There's my there's my first one, but it's way down in there. And you'd have your stitch marker on it already. So that's what I do. I don't do the magic ring. I just don't want, I don't want to do complicated things. Oh, I, I've done enough complicated stuff. <laughs> I want to do easy stuff, okay? <laughs> I, so much for me is already complicated enough. That I'm not going to do extra complicated. I know that might sound lazy. But I'm just content with the way things are for me right now. So I hope that helped. And um, thanks for asking that. Okay, so somebody asked about fishing. If we enjoyed fishing. Well, I did used to go fishing with Big Daddy back in the day. Um, and I would have fun doing that. But 
I haven't been to do that in quite a while because I go to the bathroom a lot. I have to go potty. And there's no potties out there, you know? <laughs> so we would have to leave frequently for me to go potty at the gas station or something. And so, yeah, he don't want me going. Um, <laughs> probably not. I don't want to go because I don't want to do that. Okay, so they're asking about the boys, if they liked fishing. Dakota, that would be a big, fat no. He would never do that because that's killing a fish, you know. I mean, no, that is not Dakota at all. Elijah, yes, he would go fish. He would eat that fish, whatever. Big Daddy, um... Yeah, he likes to go and fishing. He hasn't been in quite a while. Um, him and Elijah used to go a lot together, but he hasn't been in a while. So, but he would like to just go and fish and throw back. He would just enjoy that. He doesn't have to like keep the fish. Um, he would just go and fish and release. Um, oh, somebody asked about our weather. Well, it's 52 degrees right now at 2.54 a.m. So, it, right at 3 o'clock in the morning, it's 52 degrees. I've, I don't think it's supposed to rain um, in the next few days. I think towards the end of the week, week it's supposed to. And I haven't looked. You know how the weather changes every day. The forecast for later in the week changes every day and I hadn't looked at it recently so I don't know uh, let's see oh somebody mentioned something about they like to play the game Animal Crossing I have never played that um, I don't I don't really know what it is but I was looking at something one day and so both my boys play Animal Crossing or did it one time I don't know if they still do but, and so I said to them, I said, oh, so that's like playing Calico Critters, except on a screen. And they were like, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Okay, somebody asked, you know, we have two boys, Dakota and Elijah. Um, they asked if we had had girls, what girl name we would have used. For Dakota, we had the girl name... Um, Victoria Nicole, I believe that's what we had picked out for Dakota. And then for Elijah, we had Molly Denise picked out. And the Denise was going to be after my friend Angela. But we had boys, and I love those boys very, very much. It was fun being a boy mom. Okay, so let's see. The biggest blanket I've made. Uh, I don't. I don't know what size it was really, but we have a queen size bed, and it did cover the whole top of our bed. It did. So, I guess that size. I, I don't know. Probably that's the biggest blanket I've made. Um, the next question is... Um, we was talking about sweet tea and unsweet tea, and somebody said that they tell the you know waiter or waitress or whatever that they'll take unsweet tea because they're sweet enough as it is. I always tell whenever they, you know, I order. Big Daddy gets water sometimes in restaurants, but sometimes he'll get unsweet tea. I guess it's whatever mood he's in, but he he normally gets water with lemon. But they'll come back to the table and they'll say, sweet, unsweet, like asking who's got what. And I'll say, I'm the sweet one. He's the sour one. Because <laughs> he gets lemon in his unsweet tea or his water. And I don't. I do not like lemon. Um, but he does. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Um, so I want to ask you guys if you would go back and look at yesterday's video and in the comments and find Dolores's comment. It's kind of a lengthy comment, but she's going through a lot right now. She's got a lot going on and she really does need prayers um, in your you know thoughts and prayers. And so if you have a moment, go back to yesterday's video, which would be Sunday's video. Because this is Monday's video, so and scroll down those comments and find Dolores and just read her comment and then you know say a prayer for her. I'm so sorry that you're going through so much, Dolores. I know a lot of us are. A lot of us have a lot going on and are just struggling. We're all on that struggle bus together. And I'm glad that we can lift each other up and just know, you know, that we're not alone. We're not alone, are we? But I did want to ask if you have a moment to take a few minutes to read her comment and then just pray for her. And thank you, Dolores, for letting me know all that that is going on with you, dear. That is a lot. Okay, so some people have asked me this question. Hold on. I had to go a drink of tea. Okay, I'm going to combine two questions right here. So, people have asked me about my headbands. Yeah, I still wear my headbands. Now, I don't wear them all the time at home because they do give me a headache after a while. But I'll wear them when I go out. Um, when I get dressed to go out somewhere you know I'll brush my hair and put a headband in it matches whatever I'm wearing not every time I mean there's sometimes I don't wear a headband it kind of depends on what my hair does on its own if it if I'm like oh that looks good which it probably don't <laughs> I won't put a headband in but then if it's like oh I'll put a headband <laughs> and then you know after we come home Eventually, I'll take that headband off because my head gets to hurting or something, you know, later. So, yeah, I still wear headbands. Um, and then some several people have asked, why don't I just cut my hair? Well, I've had short hair before in the past, and I just don't care for it for myself. Now, I see ladies in town or something, and they have short hair, and it is beautiful on them. But it just doesn't look right on me. I, I just don't like short hair on myself. Um, and Big Daddy likes long hair. He likes fat women with long hair, okay? Y'all, that's the truth. He don't like skinny women. <laughs> okay, let me just tell y'all this story. One time... um one time we were hanging out with a bunch of homeschool moms. We were at the park. We had done something else that day. And then we went to the park. And we just, it was an all day thing. And then some of them were going to the bayou to watch the uh, college skiing contests that they were having that afternoon. And um, Big Daddy was with us that day. I guess it was back when he wore his shelf work. And he was with us. And so... Somebody, well, we were leaving because we had some other things we needed to go do. And then somebody said, oh, aren't you going to go to the bayou with us? And I said, no. I, and I did not want to go. I, I was ready to call it quits for the day and do whatever we need to do and go home. And then I said, um, they're like, oh, why? Why don't I go? And then I was just like, Big Daddy don't like to see skinny women. And... <laughs> And they all turned and looked at him, and he's like, uh-uh. And so, <laughs> so we always say that now, that uh, he only likes fat women. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he likes fat women with long hair, okay? We're so silly. We are. We're just so silly. So, did you see how I just joined? I joined that, and I'm just jumping up. To do the next row so yep that's where you know this randomness will come in and now I have a starting a new row 
All right, so let's see what else. Oh, Reynolds. Somebody was asking about, they see, you know, how the Reynolds affects my hands. Uh, I'm sure you've seen in lots of videos where I've showed you, like, just either all of my fingers or partial of my fingers. Sometimes half the finger or section of it would just be white and just frozen. That means no blood flowing through there. And so, they're all doing really good right now. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, like half the finger will be white or all of it or all, one hand will just be dark purple. So, they were asking, did it affect my feet and toes like that? Uh, yes, very much so, all the time. Um, a lot of times when I get out of the shower, my, my feet will just be dark, dark purple. My toes will be... Sometimes they'll just be so white. One time, and I think I have said this before because I remember saying it to somebody. We were in the kitchen, and I was talking and to Dakota. I think me and both the boys were in there, and we were talking, and I was talking to Dakota. And Dakota said, I don't know, but I, I do have one question. I was like, what? He said, what morgue did you go to, morgue, did you go to to get those feet on you? <laughs> And I looked down, and my feet looked like they should have been on a dead person. Oh, it was just, yeah. They do that. They do that. But, okay, so let me just go ahead and give you the scoop. Now, I'm going to spill the tea and tell you like it is. Reynolds also affects my nose. Sometimes when we're in a restaurant or somewhere, we have to hurry up and get out of there because my nose will turn dark, dark purple. And it'll start hurting. My nose will. But I'm going to tell you something else. It also affects my breast. Okay? Yes, it does. And that's painful. That is painful. But what I hear might even be more painful is it will affect men and their extra part too. Can you imagine? That makes me want to scream just thinking about that because I know how my hands when that happens to my hands and my feet and you know other places it hurts so bad it is so painful and so what I've been told is that it affects men and their extra extremity and I just can't even imagine how painful that might would be bless their hearts so there you know now you know you probably always wondered that now you probably never even thought about that but yeah it is I'm gonna drink give me a little more tea um somebody asked about where do I get my lifelike dolls like the big reborn dolls um, some of them I've gotten off of Amazon um, I have some Par Paradise Gallery dolls, some Ashton Drake dolls, and when I'm when I do get a doll like that, I do try to get ones that look lifelike instead of like a baby doll. I try to get ones that you know look more lifelike, and when I dress them or pose them for photos and stuff, I do try to make them look lifelike instead of baby dollish. You know. Uh, let's see. Okay, somebody asks, is it hard for me to accept help? It is extremely hard for me to accept help. Because I've always been one that helps others. I've always been one that, you know, done for others. I taught my, you know, that was me and my kids. We did community stuff um, in our church. We were kind of one of the younger families. There wasn't that many young families in the church. And so as my kids were growing up, we would, um, on Sundays, we would, you know, talk to different elderlies in the church. You know, we had different um, ones that we would knew that needed help or something like that. You know, we would talk to them and visit with them and see what they needed that week if they needed me to go get groceries for them 
go to the library and get movies for them or books for them or just whatever they needed me to do. Go pick up some prescriptions or whatever, you know. Um, I, I was one that was always helping other people. And I'm not bragging on myself. Please don't, please don't take it like that. I'm really not. I'm just explaining that I would rather be helping somebody than having to have somebody help me. And it's just hard for me to accept help because I, I don't know. And then somebody has asked me before, is that a pride thing for me? And it probably is. It, it probably is. And that's... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I know it is. And I need to, you know, get over that. But, yeah, it is hard. There's something we need done right now that we just can't get done right this minute. Um, and somebody has, you know, said, oh, we'll come do that for you. And I'm like, no. And I just kind of make up an excuse because, um, I don't know, I'm just... Not really embarrassed that we need help doing it, but I just don't expect anybody to do it. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but um, yeah, I really feel bad when somebody has to help us do something. Unless like Zeke, you know, if I'm paying him to do something for us, that is great. Um, you know, I don't mind doing that at all. But, um, you know, we, we do have taxes coming up, so I don't have extra money to pay to have, you know, a lot of things done right now. But I will, I will later. I will later. But, um, yes, it's hard for me to accept help. I'd rather be helping somebody, doing something for somebody, than having to get somebody to help me. Very much so. But I was trying to teach my kids, you know, as they were growing up, that this is what we do. We do for others. We help other people and such, you know. We would go and visit with the elderly. Um, a lot of times if we were, you know, went to town and on the way back home, if we didn't have groceries, like cold stuff, and it was, you know, if it was in the wintertime, we might stop for a minute. But in the summertime, you can't if you got groceries, cold stuff and all. But we would stop by different ones and just say hello and check on them and see if they needed anything. And then, you know, I'd say, well, I can, I'm going to run to town tomorrow. I can go pick up that for you or something, you know. And I probably wasn't even going to town, but I would do it anyway. And then there was, this, you know, some of the ladies in the church that had lost husbands or whatever or were no widows we would um me and the boys would take them out to eat um after sunday i mean like not all of them at the same time we would rotate and we'd like we'd ask miss van this week and you know different ones we'd ask another week so yeah i was just trying to you know teach my boys this is the way you be a productive citizen in life. So now I'm going to go to this color here. And see, that one didn't go all the way around either. And that, that's okay. That's what I wanted. To be more random. And not know where my colors were going to end. And such. I didn't want to have control over it. And by making these balls... I'm letting go of that control because if I still used the skein and just, you know, was using some off of it, I'd probably end up going the complete round and, yeah, if there was enough yarn on there. But anyway. And you may not like this look. If you're making one of these blankets, you might want to just... Um, you might want your colors to go all the way around. And if you have enough skeins of that yarn, then you won't have a problem with that. Okay, so going back to my list of questions. Um, okay, so I mentioned such as putting a ponytail in my hair or picking up a full pitcher of tea and trying to pour tea into a glass. And I'm, you know, can't hold the glass because I got to use both hands to hold the pitcher of tea. Um, 
you know, just things that are difficult for me. They asked, what are some other things that are difficult for me that people with, you know, without hand issues might take for granted? Um, I don't know. I haven't, like, made a list or thought of that, but um, there's lots of things that are you might not think about you can't do if you don't have your hands. Like, in the bathroom, there's some issues. I'll leave that at that, but yeah. Um, when I get in the bed at night, okay, I sleep on my left side. I can't, I can't lay on my right side at all, um, or I just immediately start refluxing if I roll to my right side. So I sleep on my left side. I used to be a belly sleeper, but I, I got a feeding tube three years ago. And so ever since then, I've been a left side sleeper. So when I get in the bed, I get, I pull the covers back. Big Daddy makes up our bed every morning while I'm still in it. If I'm, I mean, I can be in the bed and he's going to make it up with me in the bed. Yes, he does that every morning. So I pull the covers back and, um, let me just see if I can kind of just show this a little bit. So I pull the covers back, and when I get in the bed, I kind of get in like on my arm here and my bringing my knee up, and I just kind of roll into the bed on my left side. So then I'm laying in the bed like this. Like once I get in the bed and I'm laying here. Okay, my covers are pulled back over here, and so I'm trying to get the covers and pull them back over me and that's hard. I end up not getting all the cover, getting some of the cover and not all of it. I mean, it, it's hard. It is hard. That's a struggle. That's a struggle for me is trying to get covered up at night <laughs> when, I, when I just got this hand to work with. Because this hand is up under me. Like this arm is, I'm laying on this arm. And this is the arm I've got to use. Yeah. That's hard. <laughs> Um, so there's probably lots of little things like that, that cutting, cutting, oh my gosh, I can snip with this. I cannot cut a straight line for anything. I tried to cut some felt just the other day. I was cutting a circle and that is the most wonkiest looking circle you ever saw. I can't cut a straight line. I just, I can't cut. M mainly, when I'm trying to cut, I'm mostly just gnawing. The scissors are just gnawing the material or whatever it is I'm cutting. Um, cause I just can't cut. I just can't. I'm right handed. And so, yeah, when I had that pinky, I could use scissors and just cut just perfectly and pretty as you please. But now that I don't have that little pinky anymore and I've just got this, I'm like, yeah, you know, I have to use this hand now. And it just don't work out. And there's probably lots of other things that um, even getting in the car... And then I gotta reach over and close the car door. Yeah, that's hard sometimes. Um, I don't know. There's lots of little things that probably aren't that big a deal, but sometimes it is frustrating. Alright, I'm going to turn the page here and see what questions is on the next page. Oh, somebody's asking me about a small dog versus a large dog, which was easier. Well, I'll say clean up after a little dog is easier than cleaning up after a big dog. And I'm not just talking about accidents. If they have an accident, of course, a big dog's accident is going to be a lot bigger than a small dog's. But also, 
large dogs have a lot more hair to shed and has to be swept up and dusted and all that than a little dog does. Um, a little dog definitely takes up less room. So I don't know. We've had big dogs and small dogs. Um, I'd say the thing that bothers me the most is dog hair. Oh gosh, I can't stand dog hair everywhere. Um, with a big dog, I'd have to just be like sweeping and vacuuming that all the time. And just washing everything because I just, I don't sound like a lot of dog hair. Now Phoebe does shed some hair, but it's, I'm able to keep that under control where it just doesn't, um, you know, get out of hand and bother me. Like a long haired, you know, but like a big dog does. Um, but I will say this, a little dog is yappy as all get out. Phoebe is just yappy as can be. And I don't even know how she knows somebody's out there. But she knows they're coming before they ever, I can even see them on the screen. My security screen's up here. I can see com people coming down the road. Before I can even see them, Phoebe knows they're coming. She just knows. And so, and then, like, sometimes people ride horses out there. And we're not up close to the road. We're a good ways back from the road. But they'll just be riding a horse down the road, and Phoebe just jumps up, and she starts barking, because she knows. She knows. She just yap about everything. Today, she was convinced that somebody drove up. I looked out there, and I did think I heard them, too. But I looked out there, and I didn't see anybody. And I even took her and let her look out the door, and she was just adamant that somebody was out there. But yeah, big dogs are not yappy like that. Big dogs just seem to bark when it's necessary. Like they don't, they're not just yapping to hear themselves yelp. In my experience with dogs that we've had, they usually just bark when they have a reason to bark. And I wonder why that is. Little dogs just want to yap, yap, yap. I think every little dog we've had has been yappy. Um, so I asked if I had f plans for future projects. Uh, just what I was talking about earlier, I think I'm just going to try to focus on some things for maybe markets or, you know, maybe some little amigurumis or something, but, um, I don't have like any huge projects planned out really at the moment. Now that could change next month. You know, I change my mind all the time, so who knows? I'm not I'm not making any rules and trying to stick with them. Let's just say that. <laughs> but um I mean I love doing projects. Okay, let's see. Um Oh so my sweet friend here said that she got her an 18 inch My Life doll. The My Life doll, My Life As dolls, they come from Walmart. They're like the 18 inch dolls. And then uh, Target has the Our Generation 18 inch dolls. And um, of course there's the American doll, American Girl dolls. They're, they're kind of pricey, so I don't have American Girl doll. I just have the um, Walmart and Target brands. And then there's the ILY Disney 18-inch dolls. And then Amazon probably has some too. Some Journey dolls or something maybe. Anyway, so she says she got her one, the 18-inch My Life As doll from Walmart and she is going to crochet her some holiday outfits and display her in her den. So I think that's a great idea. And if you don't know, you probably do, but I'll just mention it in case you don't or somebody else don't. Um, Pamela's Adoring Crochet. She has an Etsy shop where she 
makes um, patterns for 18 inch dolls and then once you like make a couple dresses or whatever um, and you just get the idea of it you can easily just make up your own from that like those two little dresses I well, one's a pants jumpsuit and one's a dress that I crocheted last night for patina I didn't have a pattern for those I just just went rogue and did something you know and I tried it on her as I was making it like when I make stuff I never make stuff like the same way twice I always do it different every time I make it okay so let's see I'm almost done with the questions y'all let's see we are um oh somebody said they were glad <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this laugh. They were glad I turned to for therapy. They're glad I turned to dolls and not liquor. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you so much for that laugh. That's great. I'm glad I turned to dolls and not liquor. Somebody asked how Elijah's doing. I did mention that in Bobby about the one or two video of this month. I don't know, but um, he's doing good. He's doing good. I'm sure he'll be calling me tomorrow evening um, while he's sitting at work, bored out of his mind. He'll probably call me and chat for a little bit. That's that's when he calls me is when he's at work, bored. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, somebody said... Um, mentioned the Niagara Falls. I would love to see the Niagara Falls. I don't know that I'll ever get to do that in my life time, but that would be something lovely to do. It would be a good experience, you know, and yeah, me and Big Daddy both would enjoy that. Um, my favorite time of year. Well, I don't like the cold, cold of the winter. And I don't like the hot, hot of the summer. So my my two favorite times of the year is when it has been so cold and then it starts to warm up a little bit. And it's like 70, maybe even 72 degrees. And it's comfortable. You don't have to have the heat on or the air. And it's just comfortable to just go sit outside and not have to worry about sweating or mosquitoes or anything like that that is the perfect time of the year but then after the summer when you have just been sweating all summer and you just feel like you just melted that first morning when we wake up with that cool crisp in the air that is one of my favorite days too it's a very welcoming day <laughs> Yes, very much so. Alright, so let's see. Somebody said if me and Big Daddy could live anywhere in the world, where would we live? I would say maybe Hawaii. Now, I don't know what the cost of living is in Hawaii. I think where we live is probably a low cost of living. And I would be shocked to live somewhere else where stuff costs like a lot more than it does here. Um, so I don't know what the cost of living is in Hawaii I'm just saying that because of the temperature and I'm a I love water I love water not to drink <laughs> but to sit <laughs> I would love to just be close to the beach and be able to go sit out there and just listen to the waves the water is so calming to me now, Big Daddy, he would say something stupid like Montana. And <laughs> no offense if you live in Montana. I'm just saying. He would say something like that. Oh, I'd love to live in Montana. Well, he's not thinking about snow. He's not thinking about stuff like that. There's no way that man could get out there and shovel his driveway to get out to go to work. There's no way he could get out and shovel his driveway to be able to get get back home and pull up in the driveway and yeah he he wouldn't make it he he couldn't do stuff like that 
But he just likes that idea, I guess. And he's not thinking about cost of living or anything like that. He's thinking about those beautiful pastures with the cows and the horses. Like, we don't have that here. We do have that here. But he's just thinking about the cowboys and, yeah. He would say something stupid like that. Okay, so you see here where my pinks went around and then it changed to that pink and now I'm coming around and it's this pink. I just like the look of that. I do. I like the look of that. So, some people might and some people, you know, don't. Um, somebody asked um, for crocheting, do I prefer a crochet pattern or a diagram? It kind of just depends on what the project is and if it's a diagram or graph or what, if it's understandable. Sometimes they're not so clear. Um, you know, like, what are they asking me to do? I just don't understand. Sometimes they're just not so clear. Uh, and sometimes a pattern's not so clear. So, I don't know. It just depends. I, I could use either one. But it needs to be understandable. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't balk at a diagram. I would look at it and see if I could figure it out. And if it was easy to understand. But, you know, if it... Well, and then I would give it a try. But if I looked at it and I was just like, I have no idea what they're even talking about. What are they doing here? What is this? Then I probably wouldn't even try it. Um, I wouldn't set myself up for failure to begin with. Well, I think that's all the questions. Yeah, it was like 35 questions that I've got wrote down here. So, thank you all. And if you have a question, you know, leave it in the comment. And we'll talk about it in the next video. But I hope you all are... Um, enjoying this month, February. I'm enjoying this blanket. I really like how it is looking. Um, I'm going to finish off this color. And then probably I'm going to crochet on Patina. A couple of outfits or some different things I want to make for her. Um, I, I like doing little holiday things you know, clothes and stuff, and so I, I do know that, you know, St. Patrick's Day is going to be coming up, and she don't have anything green. She don't have any green clothes, so I need to um, crochet her something green, and Easter, she needs a beautiful Easter dress, right? So, yeah, I got I got things I want to make for her, and like I said, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing some Valentine photography for her. Just different little pictures. Um, some some of the things that we're supposed to find. Let me see. I've got wrote down. We're supposed to take a picture of her with a teddy bear, uh, some candy hearts, um, a picture with heart shapes, and we can interpret this any way we want to. Um, with flowers, flower flowers, <laughs> um, paper hearts, frosting, balloons. A key, a broken heart, Cupid, mailbox, a tiny mailbox, um, chocolate covered fruit, tiny notes, pink, purple, or red outfits. And so I have taken pictures so far of uh, her with a key and her with as Cupid and the mailbox and I've probably gotten all those color of outfits in so far or I, I mean I do have those outfits I know different colors so I'll, I'll get that part um, and tiny notes I did get that um, the chocolate covered fruit I already crocheted some strawberries that are dipped in chocolate you know, I started it with um, brown. This brown right here. To be the chocolate. And then after I got up a little bit, I 
I did a couple rounds of that and then I went to my pink or red or whatever color to make the strawberries. So that's her chocolate covered fruit that she's going to have in some video, um, not videos, but photos. And then, um, Broken Heart. I have that already set up. I just need to take the photos. I mean, I have her in an outfit with go getting ready for that photo. Um, balloons. I don't know exactly what I'm doing with that so far. Frosting. I kind of have an idea. And, um, flowers. I did take that video, that photo. Um, and she's still sitting in there from that photo, so. Um... And let's see what else. A heart shape. I do have some heart shape things. So that'll be an easy photo. Candy hearts. Yes, I already bought some um, candy hearts. And I can eat those because they just, you know, hold it in your mouth and they'll melt. So I had to, um, I got to get that photo before I eat all the candy hearts, okay? <laughs> I'm going to have to just take a picture of her sitting on my stomach and say she's with candy hearts. <laughs> So, I got to take that picture tomorrow. And then a teddy bear. And I do already have that planned out also. So, yeah, I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow is take some photos of Patina. And um, Big Daddy will be back at work. Just be me and the animals here. And I'm going to try to do that. I've got to clean off the dining table when I finish for her photos when I start to do a project like that like right now the doll room is a um, disaster because I've just been in there just looking for things for props for photos and stuff and not putting everything back you know accordingly <laughs> when I'm done with it and I have all these boxes I have keep stuff, I sort stuff in boxes, like those little Walmart um, white plastic shoebox size, and then they had the next size up is about like a shoebox and a half. I buy those, and um, I need to get some more of both sizes because, um, yeah, I sort. I'm a sorter, organizer, and I've run out of boxes to organize some stuff so anyway so I've got to get in there and clean that room it needs it really bad and I might even like make a video of that something to hold me accountable that I have to I got to get this done if I start recording the video I'll most likely keep going at it so I can get it done but right now on the dining table I've got a uh, valentine stuff spread out poured out <laughs> all over that table and the thing is um i don't usually leave stuff like that because the cats especially miss sissy sissy i just sit there and tied that in a whole bunch of knots miss sissy will be like trying to steal that stuff so i'll probably before i go to bed i'll probably take a quick peek and see what needs to be moved so she don't get it while I'm laying down. But I've got to get that dining table cleaned off and all that put away. Um, mainly for... Because of sissy. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I plan on doing um, the rest of the day. I'm going to have to take a nap at some point, right? And that's about all. But I hope you guys are doing great. Um, what, tell me what your plans are for the week. Oh, I do have a doctor's appointment come Wednesday in Shreveport. So me and Big Daddy will be going to Shreveport on Wednesday for my doctor's appointment. And I'm going to the pain doctor. And he will up my medication and my pump by 20%, which is still nothing. <laughs> It's still nothing. Still not going to, you know, like, feel anything different 
from that, but eventually I will. And I am glad that he's taking it slow the way he does because um, you don't want to just jump to a large dose when you could have been taking a smaller dose all along. So by doing this and whenever I get to an amount where I say, hey, I felt a difference last week, you know, then we can talk about, you know, what level it needs to be at or whatever. So, yeah, that's that's my only thing I think I have going on this week is just that doctor's appointment on Wednesday and needing to do cleanups and organizing and stuff like that around here. I need um, a few more organizing boxes. So, yeah. But tell me what you got going on this week. Are you just working on projects? What projects are you working on? Or what do you have going on in your life this week that you want to tell me about? I'd love to read about it. I'd also, um, you know, give me your questions also if you got some. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let you all get going. I love you. Remember, it is a beautiful day to crochet. No matter what your weather's doing, it's always a beautiful day to crochet. Bye, guys. I'm not going to crochet all this purple up, probably. I don't know. I might crochet... I guess I might crochet down to here before it starts a new round. I'll probably stop there for tonight. But I did get a lot done, right? We I started on this pink here. I went to that pink. And then ended up going to this pink. And now I'm on the purple. So, yeah, making progress. Alright, bye guys.